Okay, so Salvador from Pi Labs let me know about a new imager for Raspberry Pi, uh, and it's called USB Imager, and uh, it says here a lightweight alternative to Belena Etcher, and it's cross-platform. So we have a look at this chart here. Uh, so multi-platform, tick. Uh, Windows works with Windows XP or greater, Mac OS 10.14 or greater, available on Raspberry Pi OS. Tiny size, like 256 kilobytes. Uh, so dependencies none, spyware free and ad free. So there's all sorts of things uh, to like about it. So I tried uh, on here, there was uh, a way of installing it into Ubuntu 20.04. I tried this, uh, it didn't work for me. Um, I'm using it in Raspberry Pi OS and I wondered if it would work the same. So I clicked on this link uh, for GitLab and so if we scroll down to USB Imager, you can see there's various different versions here and Raspberry Pi OS is what I'm using at the moment. I'm using the 32-bit version. So I clicked on that and it downloads. So hit keep. So once it's downloaded, it then prompts you to install. You can see it says, do you want to install this file? So I'll say yes. I've already installed it, but I'll just let it do it again. Pop your password in. And that's it. So now we click on the Raspberry and go to System Tools. You can see USB Imager is there. And uh, it's a very basic interface. Let's close down this web page. So I guess we locate the image here. I wonder what I've got on here. I don't think I've got a lot on this particular system because it's small. Oh, I've got 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS. So I could pick that. Uh, and it handles uh, zipped files as well. So that'll be interesting to see what it does. Now I need to pop something in to write to. So I'm running this OS from an SD card, so I'm gonna put my uh, SD card that I wanna to write to in an SD card reader, USB reader. Pop it in the USB 3 slot. So this shows me, so there's 128 gig uh, memory stick in there and there's also the 32 gig that I've just put in. So I'm gonna pick the 32 gig one uh, I'll go with verify. I won't change anything for that, so let's hit write. Put in our password and see how quick it does it. It's quite nice that it shows how many minutes left. That's quite a nice touch. So it quite quickly went down from three minutes to two minutes, so it's definitely gonna be quicker than it initially said. Okay, so that was done in four minutes and six, so much quicker than I thought and much quicker than it said. Uh, so I guess we ought to try and see if that boots up. So let's shut this down. Okay, so that's booted up perfectly. Okay, so that worked fine. So I'm back up and running in 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS. I'm just gonna plug in my four terabyte drive because something I came across with the Damaso build, I didn't have enough storage to download the Damaso build. So I bought a four terabyte drive because I needed extra storage anyway. Uh, and I've just plugged it in. But you can see what happens with Raspberry Pi OS. It doesn't like it because it's formatted as XFAT. Uh, so what I did was I ended up using uh, the Monk Ubuntu build in yesterday's video. So let's boot up in that and show you what happens. Okay, so now I'm in Flame Monk Ubuntu. If I plug in my four terabyte drive, you can see that it shows up on the desktop here and it is perfectly usable without me having to do anything. Uh, and so I ended up copying over from my 750 gig drive, which didn't boot, but I did, it, it successfully wrote, or it seemed to successfully write. So let's plug that in to my Pi as well. Okay, so now we've got, uh, well, it looks like three drives, but this is the Damaso image. Uh, so there's a boot folder and a root folder. Now, it wants to open things up. Let's open the root folder. And uh, some of this didn't work, some of it wouldn't copy over. But if I went into home, and this Damaso build is like a fully loaded RetroPie build. So I'm gonna experiment with it because the Damaso builds I've had before have been excellent. Uh, there is a RetroPie folder, and in that RetroPie folder, I copied the contents of this ROMs folder, which is about 400 gigabytes, 370, something like that. Yeah, it's gonna take a while, oh no. Yeah, so 375. So it's huge. So basically I just copied the contents of that over to the Seagate, but I also changed it to RetroPie-mount. And the reason I did that is because uh, RetroPie looks for that folder and it looks for a folder within that called ROMs. 
and it looks for the uh, individual game system folders in there. So I now have uh, and the ability to be able to use this 500 gig image but just the ROMs because the BIOS and some of the other bits didn't work. So I don't know if it's a corrupt drive, I got it from CEX and I've had it, uh, well not very long but it, it has been working but every now and then it would fail to boot. So I'm still going to experiment with other things on that but I just thought this was another way around it. So now I've got that RetroPie mount folder. So now what I want to do is take out this uh, 750 gig drive. Uh, I think it'll be alright to unplug it. Oh, let me just show you how I get it to work. Here's my four terabyte drive. That's the one called Seagate on the desktop. So that's plugged straight into a USB 3 socket on my Pi 4. I'm only using a standard Raspberry Pi power supply with this, nothing else. Uh, the NVMe drive and the bottom SSD isn't plugged in. The 750 gig drive, which is this one here, uh, so that one is plugged in, but um, the only way I can get two physical drives to work with this system, this J Micron adapter, which I show in other videos, uh, has got power coming from a separate USB power supply, so that's what's powering it, and then it's just sending data into the other USB 3 socket. So I've got two things plugged in, and, uh, and that's the only way I can do it. If I try and plug in two physical drives, or try and run the OS from an SSD and plug in a physical drive, it doesn't like it, it's too much power. But as long as you use this separate cable which uses uh, separate power to the drive is absolutely fine and it writes images and everything else and I'm currently running the operating system although it runs from SSD I'm running Flame Monk Ubuntu from an SD card because obviously I've got two physical drives plugged in it gets a bit complicated right so let's go back over to desktop so I'm all plugged in and uh, just to go through so arcade 1261 games Atari 2600, 489 games, let's get to some of the bigger systems. Dreamcast, 129. Uh, N64, 143. NES, 779. PSP, 39, oh, not very many PSP. PSP Minis, 41. PlayStation. 271 crikey so if I click on that you can see that I can flick through but I haven't copied over uh, the uh, all the information the screenshots the videos and things like that I've just copied the ROMs over really uh, but that's fine that I, I can then at least play the games as I say I haven't given up on the Damaso build uh, but it's nice to be able to try this I also need to try Recal Box uh, and also Supreme Ultra which still isn't released yet I keep getting asked a lot about that they haven't done an update on the previous version um, but uh, Supreme Ultra is coming, but I don't quite know when. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll try this four terabyte drive on those other systems. Okay, so I hope this all helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.